Welcome to the YouTube channel people. Thank you for subscribing if you did. If you didn't, you know what to do. Hit the button, be somewhere on the screen. Join the movement. It's been a journey so far. My main aim with this channel is so I can document my journey, my personal story, the ups, downs, swings and roundabouts and shed light on the side of finance that mainstream media just doesn't seem to cover. And I want to build a community of winners and like-minded people that we're just helping each other along this journey to success. With this first video, I'm just going to have a brief explanation and go over of my story, my personal journey, the ups, downs, swings and roundabouts, the life of an entrepreneur. So I'm going to go from the turning point. We don't get to choose our cards in life. We just got to deal with whatever comes our way. It's the way things always have been. It's the way they always will be. In 2013, I was in a car accident with me and four friends. Two of my friends did not make it from that accident. Me and another was in hospital sick. My other friend escaped with minor injuries and he wasn't hurt, which was a blessing to me. You gotta you, you, you got you gotta count your blessings. I was in hospital for three months after the accident. I broke my back, my leg, my arm, my ribs, my jaw, I had a laceration, half of my neck was ripped off, I nearly had my leg amputated, I caught pneumonia two months in. When I come out, I had to go on a mobility scooter for three months because I physically couldn't walk properly without being in pain. And it'd be the prime of my life. <laughs> Thought it'd be the prime of my youth. That was taken away from me. My time, my most precious asset. I can't get that back. It was gone. You can't put a price on it. I didn't win a scratch card. I didn't buy a lottery ticket and was handed a big load of money. My body was broken and I nearly died. Everything's been changed. I still can't look up to this day. There's loads of things I can't do. I don't like to talk about them and moan about them because they're negative. I want to think about the positives in life and how I'm moving forward. But there's no amount of paper or price you can put on what I went through. So as I was in hospital, I was approached by a solicitor who said to me and my friend, we was entitled to some form of personal injury claim, which of course I went through with. If I was entitled to something, I would take it. That dragged on for about a year. Repeated meetings, bringing everything up, explaining the accident to all the new doctors I had to visit. It wasn't something I enjoyed. It, I couldn't move on. I couldn't physically move on in life. I couldn't try to regain back a bit any normality while all of this was going on. So I received my first offer after a year, which is quite a short time for anyone who knows about personal injury claims. That They usually drag on for four, five, six years, very long periods of time. I was at a first offer after a year, which before I even read the figure, honestly, this is no lie, before I even read the figure, I knew I was taking it. I wanted everything over with. No more doctor's meetings, no more talking about this accident, no more bringing it up, no more keeping myself depressed in a negative state up here. I was taking whatever it was and moving forward. So I was sent to see a psychologist because what I took was actually, from what the guidelines stated, was seven figures that's a million plus lower, a million plus lower than what I was meant to receive. But as I just stated previously, there was no amount of money, there was no paper number you could put on what I had been through. There was, I wasn't going to keep going through it. Two people lost their lives. I was alive. I wasn't going to drag something on. I just, it wasn't going to happen. I accepted that first offer. So to accept that first offer, like I said, I was sent to see the psychologist, told them what I had to tell them. There was nothing they could really deny me. If I want to take it, that's my choice to take the money. So that's what I did, I took it. So after all of the psychologist meetings, solicitor meetings, I finally received the compensation. The one good thing I can say that I did do with it, even though my mindset's changed now, doing it, I bought my home. I bought my home before I had the money in my account. So I went down, went into the estate agents, I said to them, listen, I want a, I want a property, but I ain't got a penny in my account, pissing, but I will have the money. So I'd like to put down an offer on a house, please. They accepted. I explained the situation. They was more than happy with that. So I went out, I viewed, I found a property I loved. I put the offer on it, was accepted. I bought it, I moved in. Second thing I'd done, after buying a property, needs to be addressed, was I bought my dream car. I went and bought a Range Rover. So the story of the Range Rover, I had my test booked for the Wednesday. Didn't have my driver's license, I had my test booked for the Wednesday, I had bought the car. I was driving it around for 48 hours, 
No, I shouldn't have been driving around without my license, but I did. Ups, down, swings, and roundabouts, you make mistakes, you move on in life. I was driving for two days. I was intending on getting a license on the Wednesday. That was the plan. I was driving in a row, driving perfectly normal. Cars in front of me, cars behind me, when I saw blue lights come on behind me. So I pulled over to the left, because I thought, obviously, they needed to get past. They needed to go past me. And then I noticed they pulled up behind me as well. I was getting out, and to be honest with you, I can't explain what happened in my head that night. Still to this day, I can't explain it. Mistakes are made in life, you can't take things back. I tried to get away. Sense me even trying to get away. It was my brain. I, like I said, I can't explain to you what happened, what I was thinking after I thought. All I do know is my friend, who has known me a very long time since primary school, who was in the passenger seat next to me, explained to me after. He said, I looked at you and it just didn't look like it was you in the seat, didn't look like it was you driving, you, there was something else going on up here, and that's the only way I can explain it. You, you, live, you live and learn, I'm not gonna beat myself up for the rest of my life because I crashed a car, millions of cars get crashed every day, yes, it wasn't right for me to do it, but you move forward in life. I'm not gonna beat myself up, or constantly remind myself that a car, I lost 31,000 pound. I spent 36,000 pound on, on the Range Rover, I sold the scrap, after the accident, I got £5,000 for it because it was total, totally just wrote off, gone. So I sold it for 5000 I had it for two days. So I paid £31,000 for 48 hours. It was a very expensive 48 hours in the car. It was a very hard lesson for me to learn. But it's like I said, everything happens for a reason. I had a lot of wrongs and negatives just coming my way from every angle. And I had to deal with them. I had to learn to deal with them and I had to get myself to where I am today. I was severely depressed, by the way, severely depressed. I would go to bed some nights, I would do a whole to-do list that day, I would go to bed at night, buzzing, my list on the side, what I was gonna do the next day, excited, and when I woke up, I didn't even wanna get out of bed. I didn't even wanna look at the list. Everything up here, it just, it's like everything would just change overnight. It's like I had a split personality disorder or some form of, I just couldn't change it, I couldn't help it. I was just trying to buy jewelry, Clothes, anything materialistic, trying just spending thousands on silly items that was not needed, thinking it was going to help me up here, which <sighs> I learned the hard way about money. It, it really doesn't bring you happiness or form. I've been sat there in a bought and paid for house, six figures in my bank, Range Rover on a drive, bar and hot tub in my back garden, Rolex on my everything you think would make a person happy, everything everyone believes, if I have all that, I'll be very happy. And I had never felt so low. If honest, I was near complete and utter breaking point. I physically, <laughs> there was points I didn't even want to be here. Stupid of me to even say, but why I say in these videos, it's all to do with your mindset. If you're feeling down, it's to do with this. If you're feeling happy, it's to do with this. If you're feeling angry, it's to do with this. Everything can be changed up here. I know everyone likes to say, oh, so what, I just do this, I think that, and everything will be better. No, maybe not that easy, but yes, it is that. Simply think into existence. Think what you want into existence, and it will follow. I knew I didn't want to work a nine to five. I've always knew I didn't want a nine to five. Everyone I ever seen growing up that had a nine to five was very unhappy. They never seemed happy. They never seemed like they had fully achieved everything they wanted out of life. I've always wanted to achieve a lot. I don't want to just, I don't want to die in the same town I was born and no one remembers who I was when I was gone. I want to leave a legacy. I want to build huge buildings with my name on. I want to own my own yacht one day. I would love to own my own yacht. I would love to fly on my own private jet. I've always wanted these things and I know they don't come free. I know it's going to take a lot of hard work, dedication to get there, which I will get there. I will speak that into existence. I will achieve what I want to achieve. I know I'll achieve that in life because I won't stop working towards it and I'll use this to my advantage for me. But with my first business, so I was all depressed. I was just running around up one day, down the next. I got a call of one of my friends. He had went to get his tattoo removed at a place where we're from. There was a two month waiting list and he paid 180 pound for the hour to get it removed and a two month waiting list. So this obviously sparked his brain and thought, hmm, there must be a little gap in the market. So he's contacted me. We sat down, 
went through everything, got a business plan together, and we opened the business. We had got someone to work for us, thought everything would be smooth. I learned a lot, a lot of lessons. I had never opened a business before. I had never done any of these things. I'd done it all myself. I just dived in, I registered it. You learn as you go in life. As again, I've explained in previous videos, I like to do when I learn. Regardless if I'm gonna make mistakes, I can change the mistakes in the future. I can learn from them and I won't make the mistakes again. So you take the silver lining from everything in life. But the same thing happened again, Lee. I think we got a few months in and one day I just woke up. Everything had just gone negative again. Everything up here, I just felt down, low. Didn't feel like I wanted to push forward with everything. Just didn't really see a future in it for me. It was, again, just, it's hard to explain the couple of years I've been through in my mind. The mind journey's been, it's been crazy. It has been a crazy journey so far. So I really just, the business just started just ticking by. It didn't grow, it just ticked by for the next few years. Just, it was paying the bills, everything was getting paid. I was, I was earning a little bit, but I never really grew it to what I know I had the potential to grow it to in my head. So that was left to tick by for a few years. Well, I went back to just doing what I knew best, just trying to mask these problems and just trying to forget about the real shit that I had to deal with up here. 2017, come across cryptocurrency. Seeing it was all the rage, everyone was talking about it, so I made a big mistake. I got in when everyone was talking about it, which I've now learned is the complete opposite of what you need to do in life. When people are talking about things, you need to stay away from it. When I'm talking the general public, when the general public, you see it in the paper, on the news, that's when you want to stay away. When your time to get in is when no one's talking about something and when the prices are down. I started chasing the ball. I missed out on 93,000 pounds in the space of five hours though. So I did, I, I just, I was five hours too late. I was five hours too late. There's a coin called Tron Project, TRX, the coin's ticker symbol is. So the coin was 0.00, .00 three noughts and a seven that was the price of the coin i had sent three thousand pound out of my bank account to coinbase at the time it wasn't instant it took about two three days to the tra for the transfer to happen the last couple i've done they're there within 10 minutes but this one took two three days to happen so i was for the two days i was watching the charts everything was the same the price of tron was the same 11 o'clock at night the night before the money come to my account i remember checking the coin same price naught point naught 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 seven pence I woke up in the morning, the three grand's in the account. Happy days. Go down to Coin Market Cap now to check the price. It's gone up. It's gone to 0 0.007. So it's still less than a penny. So I'm thinking, oh, I've still got a chance to get in here. I've done the maths. I missed out on 93,000 pounds from that five hours. If that money would have been in my account, from what it went up in the following weeks after that, if that money would have been in my account five hours, previous because I checked that's when the coin price jumped up about four in the morning I went to bed at 11 five hours I'd have had 93,000 and when I'd have moved forward I still made I think I made I think I made about six seven thousand in that bull run in 2017 I made about six seven thousand but the 93 was just killed me it literally killed me I thought five hours that's nearly six figures. It's a big boost to anyone's bank. I don't care how rich you are. It's a big boost to anyone's bank, 93,000. So I just had to deal with it. Carried on chasing the ball. Carried on chasing the ball run. Invested it into loads of other different coins. Learned the platform. Yeah, because I taught myself. So I've come across cryptocurrency. Went on YouTube. Got myself a course. Learned how to do it. Learned how to deal with wallets. Learned how to send it all over. Just learned all the basics. And I just got stuck straight in. Just like I do. Was chasing the ball. Invested everything. I think I invested about all in all, including the winnings as well, about twenty five thousand in two thousand and seventeen, and then, boom, collapse, done. I think I woke up to like, I think I woke up to like six thousand pound, five thousand, lost twenty grand. I was just thinking, whoa. That was after the bull run stopped. Everything just collapsed down, and at the time I wasn't. I wasn't as educated as I am now. Obviously I had common sense. I knew everything comes back up eventually. Nothing stays down, I knew this. I didn't know how long, I didn't know what was going. I didn't cash out. So what I'd done is I thought, right, I'm just gonna lock it all away. I'm just gonna lock all my crypto away. I'm just gonna put it away, tuck it to the side. 
it'll all come back it'll all come back one day and then we can go from there kept just kept reminiscing on this 93 just kept thinking why why didn't I catch the 93 instead I've just lost 20 what's going on but like I said put that away another thing I had to deal with was tottering on with the tattoo business just like I said I wasn't chucking I wasn't chucking my all in there I know I've got something in here. I've got a lot of drive in here. It just was, I couldn't access it at a time. Like my environment, everything, I just couldn't access it. So I put all the crypto away, carried on, just I think it was about a year, tick by year into 2018. Then I come across e-commerce. Heard about e-commerce, making money from a laptop, use a bit of time, learn how to do it right, then things can go wow. Seeing a lot of people that have made millions from it. It's, it's not a joke, people do make millions from this. The people that say about scams, they're just confused. Well, not even confused. It's stupid. You're very stupid. To say a comment which can be easily answered by something where you just do a simple Google search. How many self-made millionaires are there from e-commerce? You can find a lot of videos online. You can see a lot of things. There's a lot of money that does get made in the space. So I thought, yeah, this is a bit of me. This is definitely a bit of me. I'll jump on this. I'll get stuck in, get it in the locker, and I'll roll forward with it. So I've done that. And again, I know people say about the courses, I bought a course. I like courses. I like to learn of people who have been where I want to be. If someone's achieved what I want to achieve and they've done it and they're willing to give me their blueprint and their time, it's a complete no-brainer to me. People spend money on all sorts of stupidness. When you could spend it on yourself, your own personal development, I think it's one of the best buys you could ever do with your life. Like, it's the best purchase I ever made my first self-development course. It changed everything, but we're gonna get to that. So, Ecom, done my course, registered my first general store. So from the course, I was told, right, make a general store, design a general store where you can test products, and when you find your winning product, you can then make a one product store based around that product after. So I made HJL products, Harry John Livingston. Used my initials, got it together, logo will be up here somewhere in the corner, Love that little logo. Registered HJL product. Run a few products through it. Instantly found a winner. Headphones was working. Was running smooth. Was getting sales. I thought, yep, yeah, definitely. So I moved on to build wireless. I thought, right. I sat there for about a week. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna move forward with this. The headphones. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a one. I'm gonna make a one product store around this. Come up with a name. Come up with the overall branding. I designed the website, I learned how to design websites, I learned how to do logos, I done it all myself, and I got it together and I threw it up. Wireless was running smooth again, I ordered my first bulk order from China, so I contacted the, this is everything I learned in my course, I learned how to find the supplier directly via Alibaba, because there's actually 99% of them sellers on Alibaba are middlemen. They're going to the factories themselves, getting the goods, then selling it to you. It's a war zone on there when you're looking through suppliers to find the right product. It took me a long time to find the right supplier for mine to work with. So I ordered my first bulk order after designing everything, customizing a few little features and just trying to make it like my own. So I ordered my first bulk order. Landed in the UK, happy days. Everything was going smooth. They were selling and honestly, the same again. The same thing happened again. I started falling into depression. It all started coming back again. I don't know why, I don't know how, and then, boom. I lost my nan. It just, I'm not saying we were joined at the hip, but that was my nan, I loved her, his family, but the main thing, it, it just brought everything home. Because I know I nearly lost my life before, but I was just trying, I've always tried to mask it out, I've always tried to blank it out, I never really tried to think of it. It brought everything back home to me. How short life is, how quick. It really hit home for me and just made me think, life is so short. It can be over tomorrow. You could have a loved one pass and you're not even there to be able to say your goodbyes properly. And it just, I remember, I was sat at the lake. I was sat at the lake, I had my laptop. I was just looking, just looking over the lake, just thinking, what am I going to do? What, how am I going to move forward? How am I going to sort this out? I'd be, what am I going to do? And honestly, a complete and utter light bulb moment. And I believe everything happens for a reason. I'm scrolling on my phone. Do you know when you're just mindlessly scrolling? 
you just you're not looking at the screen or what's going on you're just mindlessly going through your phone so i'm doing this on the lake i'm just scrolling looking up i've always loved nature when i need to think i go for a walk i get myself around trees and water and animals this it's what clears my mind you get city people and country people i definitely prefer the country so i'm at the lake i'm looking over the water i'm scrolling and then for some reason i've stopped like i said i was mindlessly i wasn't paying attention to anything that was on the screen and then this has just caught my eye. It's caught my eye. So I've stopped. I've looked down. I'm like, what's this? Kevin Green, wealth coach. So I've watched the video. To this day, oh, mate, if I would have scrolled past it, if I would have scrolled past that video, nothing would be the same now. I just know it wouldn't. It was, it was meant to be. I was meant to watch that. So just a quick roundup on Kevin. He's the UK's largest private landlord by properties owned. He was homeless in 1988. Completely self-made, no silver spoon. This story, brief 60 second video, he's going through everything, how he got there. Then at the end it says how you can sign up to his free one day course, where he goes over property and explains all his strategies on gold and silver, buying diamonds and gemstones from the mines in Thailand and coming back and selling them in wholesale to UK jewelers. A lot of exciting, exciting things were mentioned on the video. So what have I done? It was a light bulb moment. I booked straight on. It was a complete game changer for me. Like I just said previously, if I didn't go to this, nothing would be the same now. My mindset, nothing would be the same. So I booked onto his call. I messaged my friend Jordan, who I was in the accident with. I said, do you, do you wanna come along? Like, explain it to him, showed him the video. He was well up for it. I said, right, yeah, book me on. So that's what we did. Went to the course, and honestly, the most eye-opening day of my life, of my entire life. The environment I had been surrounded in before, I had never been around anything like this. I had never heard winners coming together and talking about these these legal loopholes, these virtual loopholes in the law where you're getting rich. And it ain't as hard as what you'd think. Ain't as hard as what, you'd think, ah, oh, so a big jeweler, they, why would they buy a diamond off little old me? Why would they do that? Why would some? Why would an investor buy a property of little old me? They ex he explained it, broke everything down, and it was the biggest mindset open of my entire life. I've never been the same person since that course. Never been the same person. And since then, I've attended many, many more. At that one day course, he sold training to his further three day course. Everyone said, it's just scams, they want you to do Listen. If it's a scam, if scams can change your mindset the way they've changed mine, pff, I love scams. Bring me as many scams as you physically can because they are amazing. So yeah, he sold further training, three day, a three day training course after that, which I was paid and signed up for, which was 3,000 for the, for the three day training course for me and my friend. So I signed up and paid for that. And we went to that in London, the, the three day training where he went over everything he explained on the one day but just went over everything in complete detail. Just to put your mind at rest and let you just, just if any question I had, I was able to speak to someone, I was able to have my questions answered and I was able to just have my mind put right. Just so I knew I, I had a plan in place to move forward from that three day course. But they offered further training, which was one-on-one -on -one personal business mentorship. Like this was expensive, bearing in mind, it, it was 18,000 and I ended up paying 20,000 because I had to wait six months to actually get the payment in and made to him. So I paid 20,000 pound for this for this one-on-one -on -one business mentorship. Front end, but that's what I needed. I needed to ask someone the questions. I, I needed someone to come to. I needed someone who would basically hold my hand and guide me through hurdles that I wouldn't have been able to negotiate before without them being there, if that makes any sense. Like before. Learn from someone who's been where you want to be. Kevin was where I want to be. My mentor Matt from the program was exactly where I wanted to be. So it was a no brainer again for me. I thought, yes, it is a lot of money. 20,000 pounds is a lot of money. But what I'll learn back from this 20, if I put the right effort in, if I put the right work in, I will earn that back complete tenfold. And that's the mindset I've moved forward with. And it hasn't let me down so far. Since then, I went on to a few more courses. And another one I went to, I went to Samuel Leeds' course. Amazing. Completely amazing. Everyone who says something about him, 
you, you you don't know the man personally, you're just listening to silly little things on the internet that you're hearing, he's a scam, he's this. No, the man is not a scam. The man is helping people. He's a very positive person who's bringing a lot of good to the world. So I also signed up for some training with Samuel. Even though I already had the mindset shift and change that I needed from Kevin and the team, I wanted to just indulge more and just dive more into this, to this world and just immerse myself in it. So I bought Samuel's course and I moved forward with the training with that. So back to the beginning where I said I was raised with a mindset that buying your house was the right thing to do. Buy your home, work, get it paid off. Every Englishman's home is his castle and all. That is what my mindset was. After the courses, listen, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving you advice. You, you do your own research on it. I learned that if you want to become an investor in life and you want to build passive income, it's going to make you financially free. Owning a property of your own is a very, very bad thing to do. I know I know it might be hard for you lot to get listening to this video now. Owning a property is a bad thing to do. If you want to become an investor and build passive income. If you want a normal 9 to 5, you just want to settle down, wife, kids, house, normal life, a couple of holidays a year, of course. Buy, buy your house. Buy your house. And I'm not even saying if you want to make more, but if you want to go for it in life, if you want to take risks, you want to try and build mega wealth, then owning your own home is the worst thing to do. So that's when I made the very difficult decision to sell. I sold the property that I lived in in order to chase the dream. After the courses, I sat there for about a month and completely just, I planned my whole entire life out. The businesses, the routes I was gonna take, the personal brand I was gonna build, what I'm doing right now. Everything had just come together, my whole plan, there was a lot in it. And to achieve that, selling the home would help me achieve it a lot faster and get there a lot quicker than what I was gonna do without selling the home. So it was a difficult decision for me. I was sat there, I was thinking, do I, do I not? I'd have to go and rent, I'd have to, it would just be chucking money away. But then I just started thinking of what I'd been taught. I kept silencing all of the old thoughts, all of the old stuff my brain had been programmed with, with the new, programming from all of these wealthy mentors who know what they're doing and haven't followed that route in life of just getting their own home sticking with that and that was it so i sold i made sixty thousand on the house sale to go towards the dream selling the house was a big big learning curve i sold my first property everything went smooth the first property i bought i sold that after two years and i moved to another one that sale went through completely smooth sound nothing went wrong exactly how I was meant to. The second house sale, I learned another couple of hard lessons, which again, I'll carry forward in me in life. So the sale fell through four times, four times. I sold the house to four separate people. The first one, I think we was two months through into the process and they wasn't allowed to buy the house because they was having 9,000 pound donated from their grandmother who lived in Spain who couldn't say where the 9,000 pound went come from. It was just money just sat in her drawer. So the anti-money laundering people, no, no go, you can't buy the house. So that left me in a bit of a situation because I had just rented somewhere new, which I was then paying rent on. So I had two homes when there was no reason to have them at the time. Someone else bought it, that fell through a week later. And then someone else bought it a few days after that. For the asking price, all of these were for the asking price, what I was asking for, by the way. So there was no, it was not, the house was bad, I was getting the asking price, we was getting sold, I had done it up, lovely. The third time, two days after they had put the offer, fell through, pulled out, couldn't really understand the explanation from this list, if I'm being honest with you, it was ridiculous. The fourth person bought it, just as coronavirus started, so they bought it about two, three weeks before the virus had started, the pandemic, maybe a month. So it's got a month in, the lockdown started, and I'm thinking, Phew, they're not gonna buy the house, are they? I'm just, I'm gonna be lumbered with this place I'm renting, this, can't start any of the, can't move forward with the dream. And luckily, they went through and bought it. They went through the purchase, they bought the property. It's a big weight off my shoulders. I literally thought, if that, if, if the fourth person would have pulled out and I was just stuck renting, plus paying the bills, because even though it was mortgage free, still got bills, still got council tax, still got gas and electric, still got water rates, 
still got TV license. There's still things you got to pay. Even when you own that property outright with no mortgage, there's still bills coming out. And it went through. So that's one thing I was very, I can say I'm happy with. I learned. Not every house sale will go smoothly. I knew they wouldn't anyway. I've got common sense. I don't always expect everything to just go swimmingly and plain sailing. I know there's hiccups along the road and along the journey. This one, there was just a bit too many hiccups for my liking. Four pullouts instead of instead of just a one sale like last time. I'm moving forward to the dream. My plan is I want a hundred properties. I want a hundred. They don't have to be a hundred single properties. I want a hundred units paying me passive income every month to the tune of, I want 50,000 pound a month passive income. That will be when I say, right, I've hit my goals. That will give me the ability to achieve everything I want to achieve. I can register my charity. I can move forward. I can build the life and the legacy that I wanted to with that passive income. I know that sounds a lot of people think, 100 houses, mate. Mate, I know people where I'm from, a lot of people. Two geezers started eight years ago. They got 113 houses. Some, some woman, she's got 89 houses. She started six years ago. These things are achievable. The people I met at these crash courses, complete winners. They don't think about, oh, I don't want to take risks, I just want to pay off my mortgage. That ain't the life they live. They take risks, they move forward. Their fortune favours the brave. They build big property portfolios. I'm young, I'm 27 years old. I'm 27, I've got three years, even until I'm 30, 30, another 10 years, even, I'll be going until I'm 70, mate. I don't think I'll ever stop. Just like Branson, just like Buffett, I don't think when you build a legacy and a life that you love, that you ever want to retire. So retiring's not in the plan. So the plan for me is move forward with the businesses, document everything via YouTube. The downs, the swings, the roundabouts, not just all the glitz and glamour. Any bad mistakes that get made, any business mistakes I make along the way, they'll be documented, they'll be shown. And with this channel and with this brand, like I said at the beginning, I want to make a community. Let's all get together. Let's the winners congregate. All get together. Start sharing the energy. I'm going to build a WhatsApp group anyway. I'm going to get a WhatsApp group built and I'm going to let everybody know the details and how to access and get in there. That can be the start. That can be the start of everybody getting together. I can try and answer some questions one-on-one -on -one more personally to people as well. I'll have a lot more than the five lines to work with that I've had on TikTok. I'll be able to try and help people more personal to their situation. I mean, you can't just simply ask the question, how do I make money at 16? I mean, a lot of people have said it. It's, it don't take a rocket scientist to work out that there can't be a one, there can't be a one answer fit for that question. Everyone's circumstances are different. Everyone's strengths, everyone's weaknesses, where they are in life, their age, a lot of things before you start telling people how they should make money. So yeah, I can maybe give out a bit more personal one-on-one -on -one tailored advice to you guys as just my appreciation for all the support that you've been giving and like i said i want to build this community i will keep moving forward and the brand think big work smart i'm telling you it's going places i'm gonna push it i promise you now i promise you now in 10 years time check back on this think big work smart brand and you tell me you think that is some big growth there. He has took that completely worldwide. That is what I will achieve. I will build this personal brand. It's going places. So just to round it off, every single one of you that have showed support since the start, I know exactly who you are. I've been going through my messages on Instagram. Honestly, it is so humbling. Some, some of the messages I receive of some of you guys, it makes me want to carry on. Like I addressed earlier in a previous video, the little, the little kids and just deluded strange people, with, they haven't even got profile pictures talking about hair, bell end, knockoff. Please just keep it up because it's building my personal brand and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock it. I'm not gonna say no to my content getting pushed further just by a few little strangers writing some really strange comments on my videos. I ain't, they ain't gonna bother me. I'm just gonna keep moving forward. The thing that does bother me and affect me is the good positiveness. The positive comments, the people that are getting something from this channel, the people that have got something from my TikTok page, the people that maybe have had even just one little shift in their mindset from one of the videos I've posted. If I've achieved that, then I've achieved something. So look out for the second video that will be uploaded soon. This one, just wanted to get my story out there. 
now you guys know who I am, where my journey started. Like I said, I didn't get to choose my cards. I didn't ask for this. I didn't win a lottery ticket. I didn't, I didn't scratch off a scratch card and get given a big lump of money. It was the cards I was dealt, and it's what I've had to work with. I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. The thing I've always been taught in life. That is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to make the best of a bad situation and move forward. Record the whole journey. And hopefully, all you guys come along for it. See you for the next video. Think big, work smart.